The video thumbnail is a little bit misleading because I only had one reason for choosing Hopkins and that was I wanted to be as far on the East Coast as possible, so here I am. However, since I am a junior now and I've been at this school for over two and a half years, I want to tell you guys why I would choose Hopkins given what I know. I'm making this video because I know college decisions are coming out soon and it is a very important decision which place you're going to go for the next four years of your life. Um, and I imagine most people like myself don't have the ability to go and visit individual schools and gauge which one fits you the best. I hope this video helps you make the best decision for yourself. Before I get started, for the sake of this video, I will loosely define top colleges as the ones that are um, highly ranked slash most competitive slash most well known. I know that the type of education you receive and how good of a fit a school is for you does not necessarily depend on that, but for the sake of simplicity, that is the term that I will stick to. So thank you for being patient with me. Also, I don't know if my experience as Hopkins is unique or it applies to other schools as well. I'm just going to tell you what I really like and but if I were you, I would still go ahead and do research on the other places that you got accepted to. Make sure you pick the right school. Now let's get started. I will try to keep it as concise as possible. If you are someone who is very interested in research or would like to try research for the first time, I believe Hopkins is the number one research institution or whatever, and it is the first research institution in the US. Getting research experience here is pretty easy and all the professors and labs are very open to having undergrads help them and be a part of it and learn from it. So really all you need to do is cold email and no one will be mean about it. Most people will accept you. More likely than not, you will have a research opportunity right away. Unlike a lot of schools, Hopkins does not have a core curriculum, meaning there are no like required classes that you have to take. However, they do have distribution requirements, which if you get accepted and you come here, then you'll find out the details later, but it is much more flexible than having a core curriculum, meaning that you can pretty much start taking all the classes that you're interested in right away. You're not forced to take classes that you don't want to take, um, unlike other places. Let's talk very briefly about rankings. I believe on US News, Hopkins is ranked number nine and it is also ranked very highly in a lot of different individual programs like public health, biomedical engineering, international relations, classics, and more. I know that rankings are somewhat arbitrary, but I believe that to some extent it can show you how much energy and time and money and resources the school is putting into your particular major or program. So it is not a perfect indicator, but it is a good indicator that this might be the school you want to go to if you have a particular interest in mind. What that interest is, you should go research by yourself. In my opinion, I think we have some pretty cool majors and pretty cool options. For example, writing seminars is a pretty big department here. Women and Gender Studies and then Medicine, Science and Humanities. It is a medical humanities major that also involves science. You know, it's like jack of all trades. I think it's very interesting. Um, and I don't think you really see that anywhere else. Now let's address the elephant in the room. I am a pre-med. One day I would like to hopefully become a doctor. And when you think Hopkins, you often think doctor and medicine. Fair enough because I think that's what we're famous for. I think it is also for good reason. I believe the statistics are, now don't quote me on this, I think the national average for getting into medical school is like what, 38%, but for Hopkins is 80%, which is a pretty big difference. That's like, that's like twice the amount. We have good support for pre-meds. Some reasons include we have a good pre-med advising office, lots of opportunities like research, like mentioned before, and also volunteering. There are a lot of student organizations for pre-health success, such as JUMP. The undergrad school has a good relationship with graduate schools and programs, which means that you get to interact with graduate students and learn from them. So graduate schools and programs include like the School of Medicine, School of Public Health, which are helpful for your pre-med career. Also, there is a lot of undergrad involvement in the hospital downtown. There is a free shuttle service called the Jimmy, which runs from the undergrad campus to the, the medical campus, which stops at Peabody School of Music. And on that note, there are also other notable graduate programs that you can be involved in, such as 
the Peabody Institute of Music. It is also apparently very highly ranked, which I was very surprised by. You can go watch free concerts. They're really cool. I, I go listen sometimes. It's really fun. There's also School of Nursing, Cary School of Business. However, there is a very common misperception that we are only good if you are a pre-med, which is not true, apparently. We are also good at the humanities. It is a growing department and it is also highly ranked in certain majors like classics and I think philosophy. The engineering school is also great. Fun fact, the School of Engineering students recently created a burrito tape. Was kind of famous for a little bit. Kind of cool. I'm sure this is a common experience among all the top colleges, but I swear the professors here are so cool. I admire them so much. I know I sound like such a teacher's pet, but they are genuinely so cool. These people are so like accomplished. Like, I don't know what they're doing teaching me, <laughs> you know? I had a professor who I think ran for Congress and almost won or something, and he told me all of his accomplishments as the Baltimore Health Commissioner and all the things that he changed that made like an actual difference in this city blows my fucking mind, okay? And these people are spending their time teaching you all the valuable stuff that they know. I think this is a very common experience around the top colleges, but we kind of exchange and rotate professors. Like we have professors that are Harvard taught and Harvard graduated and Northwestern and UNC Chapel Hill and you know what I mean? They're just from all over the place. And it's really cool. Whichever school pays them the most money, they rotate to that school. We pay them a lot of money. And then the other schools pay them a lot of money so that they run away, but we don't talk about that. So we're always rotating good professors, is my point. I know there are prettier campuses out there, but I don't think it is too ugly. There are certain buildings that are very nice, like this is a library, and this is the newer part of the library. It's quite nice. It's more modern, and it's very conducive to studying. And there are also buildings like Gilman Hall, which is very nice. And then we have the undergraduate teaching lab, which is just a whole building of labs for undergraduates to learn hands-on from. Pretty cool. And if you are watching this video, you are younger than me, which means you will likely get access to the new student center that they've been building. It is so loud sometimes and we're paying for it for you guys to enjoy it. Hey, There's also something new called the Agora Institute. I believe it is the Institute for Democracy or whatever. There are new cool buildings that are popping up that you guys will get to enjoy when it is your turn to be here. I think it is true that Baltimore is not the safest city on this planet, not one of the best cities to live in necessarily. However, I think that we are in a pretty good location. There are things that you could do to enjoy yourself in Baltimore. Also because we are smack dab in the middle of the East Coast, it is fairly easy to take a train or a bus to New York or down. Pretty fun. And if you run out of things to do in Baltimore, no worries. You take the Mart train for nine bucks to DC and then you take a Metro card and you run around. And that's what a lot of Hopkins students do. We wear our little Hopkins hoodies and then we hop on a train and then we go to DC and during cherry blossom season or whatever fun stuff is going on, we just go. 45 minutes to an hour the train ride. It's like not a big deal at all. You got into Hopkins, which means you're probably a very smart person. And you work very hard. However, we still have academic support, which I think is really nice. There are things like the Learning Den, which is essentially office hours, where some person who is an expert in their subject will sit there and wait for you to come up and ask any question that you have if you can't go to the professor or your TA's office hours. Or if you just want extra tutoring help. We have study consultants, which are higher performing older students at Hopkins that help you figure out how to best succeed here, how to manage your time, how to manage your energy, how to do well in certain classes. You can ask them for advice. There is a writing center. You can book an appointment and they will help you write pretty much anything. They're pretty well trained. Some of them are students, some of them are actually like hired adults. And if you have any sort of essay, research paper, whatever, you make a appointment and they help you. And then there's something called pilot, which I personally do not like going to pilot because I it's like an extra class to me. However, a lot of people find it extremely helpful and some classes are even mandatory. Pilot is when other older peers that already took the class and did well in it, 
uh, lead like group classes doing problem sets. And for classes like organic chemistry, chemistry, physics, math, like very problem heavy classes, it is really helpful because you get extra problem sets and you get someone you can ask. That is all I have for now. Anyway, thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciate it if you reach the end because no one watches to the end and it makes me kind of sad. But anyway, if you think that was helpful, if you have any questions, if you want me to make more specific videos based on anything I've said today, or honestly like anything that you want me to cover that you think I have some knowledge on, please feel free to comment. I will actually read them and I will make a video, I swear, okay? I have so little comments at this point. I read every single comment and I will make it happen. Yes. And if you find me entertaining, informational, inspirational, someone to pity, whatever it is, please subscribe, okay? Thank you. Bye.